All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. This is the brother Bakala Wala with another hopeful, edifying video for the body of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, Bashem Rakakadash, and double honors to the elders and the apostles that learned the truth from the men of DMS and the brethren with a like minded doctrine. I want to say Shalom again to the Akim and to the Aqua. I have his video here, you know, um, you see the title, I want to be careful about um, um, the words that I use, you know, because they, you know, the, um, like the algorithm picks it up, you know, so um, I have his video here, I'm going to put the, the, um, the link in the description box, and basically I'm going to play the first four minutes, a little over the four minutes, and you get the cusp. Or get the the majority of what it's talking about, you know, basically about this um about this um deadly, you know what is around, and they are uh, basically in the mandatory or mandate stage of of making this thing um like it is mandated or mandatory. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna just play the first uh, little four minutes of it. And then get us get into some scriptures. Are supercharged lab enhanced viruses becoming a global threat? Gain of function research. Gain of function. So called gain of function research known as gain of function. The controversy around so called gain of function research has erupted alongside the heated debate around the coronavirus pandemic's origin. It's a tale of two theories. A lot of Democrats poo pooed the whole idea of the lab leak. Prominent public health experts saying that the lab leak theory, which was previously hawked by conspiracy theorists, might actually be credible. This has moved high-risk gain-of-function research from the secret of shadows into the public spotlight. We've set out to investigate why, how, and where this type of research is being done, and what the risks and benefits are. So what exactly is gain-of-function? It is a type of research that makes pathogens, like viruses, deadlier or more infectious to humans. The researchers intentionally modify the virus in lab experiments to give functions. For instance, the ability to spread by air or attack human nerve cells. Gain of function research seeks to make a virus more easily transmissible between humans, to increase the severity of the disease it triggers, or to make it resistant to existing treatments or vaccines. Sounds crazy. Two main reasons are given for why this type of research is done. One is to better predict which viruses in animal populations might one day naturally mutate and become infectious for humans. The second is to be better prepared when a new pandemic hits, for instance, by already developing a vaccine for it preemptively. But there are obviously valid reasons for gain of function research, and the main reason is to understand pathogens better, to understand the way they transmit and behave, and thereby to make vaccines, drugs, etc. So, how many vaccines have been developed as a result of gain of function research? None. <laughs> uh, there have been no preemptive vaccines to date. Have any pandemics been prevented thanks to gain of function research? The answer is not that I know of. Not that I'm aware. What's clear is that it didn't prevent this coronavirus pandemic. Actually, none of the gain of function research that was done over the past decades, however, like none of it contributed to finding a vaccine or, or cure for SARS-CoV-2, for COVID-19. But in the future, there could be potential for that. Some scientists think this is a perfectly legitimate endeavor. Others say it's akin to checking for a gas leak by holding a match to the gas pipe. In the effort to protect us from a pandemic, scientists could cause a pandemic. So let's look a bit more closely at how gain-of-function research is done. One method is to genetically re-engineer pathogens by inserting genes from one virus into another to make it more aggressive. Another simpler method is called animal passaging. Researchers inject a virus into ferrets or so-called humanized mice. These mice have been genetically manipulated to have human lung receptors. The virus undergoes slight mutations as it passes through several generations of mice. 
as scientists select the strongest mutations until the virus eventually becomes transmissible to humans. The scientific technology today is so good that you can make a whole genome of a virus with no scars, no, no seams or anything. It looks perfectly natural. In 2011, an extreme gain-of-function experiment rocked the science world. Scientists used the serial passaging method to make the H5N1 avian flu virus more transmissible to humans. The lead scientist, Ron Fouchier, claimed he created one of the most dangerous viruses you can make. They had taken a virus that was deadly but, but not good at infecting humans and made it also very infectious. So that kind of research, I think, is the risk are immensely high. If it broke out, it, there would be just widespread death. Uh, but the benefits, uh, what are they? <laughs> Many scientists look at this experiment and they think, why? Why did you do this? The thing with the avian... See, yeah, that's all. I'm going to play, play for the video. It said a whole lot in there. You see, it says, um, I should have stopped and paused it at a couple a couple um, spots in the video. But I'm, like I said, I'm going to leave the um, video, on the link to the video in the description box. You know, that's been pure, pure, like, wicked. You know, they talk about causing a pandemic, you know, basically a pandemic like the like that brother's been saying, this is a basically pandemic, you know, cause it just to see what's gonna happen and, you know, um, they are creating these things on the um, hypothesis of maybe um, uh, a virus that's that's um, found within the animal community, it may wipe out a uh, or, or transferred to the human population or something just based off on um, um, theories and hypotheses and all that. And that's what, like madness. But I'm going to get this out of the scriptures. I want to go to um, Akai 2 and 1. and one it reads woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds when the morning is light they practice it because it's in the power of their hands you see that's what they do you know but it's this um it's gain of research whatever you know um you know it's in the power of their hands to, to do this um this type of um research you know and they practice it you know you know this wickedness you know and, um, I want to get this out of Psalms. Um, Psalms 144. Call Light and Light. I was hot. 144 and 11. And it reads Rid me and deliver me from the hands of the strange children who mouth speak of vanity. And that right hand is the right hand of falsehood. You know, that's that's what it is, man. Like this 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 whole this whole thing is, is pseudo. You know, is um is is based off deceit, lies, you know. It's all centered around controversy because of the origin of it. How it came about is already proof that that they lying about the um the origin the, the origins of this thing. Now they got a, um, a lethal injection they want you to get, and they making that mandatory. You know, soon, soon, soon enough. Um, you know, gra through gradualism, they gonna make it mandatory for everybody to get it. And you know what's gonna come next is the MOTB. So I wanna also get this out of Psalms 141 nine. And it says, um, keep me from the snares which they have laid for me and the gins of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own net which that I withdraw, escape. You know? So only how we can um, escape this is through, uh, is through the, um, the commandments of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Rely on our power, which is Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Don't let the wicked fall in their own net. So, and I want to also get this. Um, 
That might be it. You know. But yeah, these people are wicked as hell, bro. Eat, um, eat them, you know. They, they wicked as hell, man. They, they create, they trying to, um, you know, depop. You know, they using um, all sorts of methods to basically um, depop, you know, your food to the air you breathe. You know, chemtrails, forever chemicals in the in the water, or in, uh, you know, forever chemicals in all your products. You can't get rid of these things called forever chemical. That's another thing. They got um, you know, they got um, they um, the GMO foods. They don't know the um, they they don't know the um, long term effects of eating these type of foods. Putting all sorts of chemicals in your food. You don't know, you know, all these um. On long, long terms of big words, they put in the back, you know, you, you look at the back of a label, you get all these different, um, big, big terms you never heard of, you know, and it's supposed to be a, a um, um, turkey, lettuce, and tomato, and lettuce, tomato, turkey, and, and bread, and you get all, t you get like, they got like a hundred, hundred, you got 30, 30 different uh, ingredients on the back of this thing, man. Like, it's crazy. It's madness, you know? So, um, yeah, I just want to um, share that with the body. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. I want to say, call her Layam La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Bashim Rakakadas. And the water, the water, the water. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai. Um, and I want to say, Shalom on to the next time. Um, Lord willing. Or Yahweh, Rathazah, and Wah, Abba, Abba.